This episode is brought to you by Beyond Pride. When you advertise with First Nations, make sure you advertise with Pride. That's www.beyondpride.com. Pride spelled P-R-Y-D-E dot com. All right, guys, you guys are tuned into the Creators Game Podcast. I'm Daya Miller. I'm joined by... Jay Smith. Chris Vale. Uh, Thunderhill. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot of lacrosse as usual, but uh, we have Thunderhill. And we're going to get to know you first uh, for everyone out there who is uh, listening who might not know. Tell me a little bit about yourself. When's the first time you picked up a lacrosse stick? Uh, I'm pretty sure like every native person picks it up very young. Like I've been playing since like before I could walk. But uh, my first official game was probably in like paperweight. And like paperweight, okay. And then like you know, some people grow up with like a lot of family around, and like they're all like you know have like lacrosse legends in your family. Did you have it like that, or were you just kind of like, hey, I want to play lacrosse, so I'm gonna go out there and play? Uh, I had a lot of people in my family playing lacrosse. Like um, my uncle Dahogan Anticoke, he was very good from a young age. I always looked up to him as somebody like I want to be like that. And as he like went further in his career, I was like, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, and that actually leads to my next question, because I was going to say, like, who's someone that you would have uh, looked up to growing up to who played lacrosse? Mm-hmm. But I guess, yeah, Nanny Coke. So, so like, uh, what else? Like, who else do you uh, look up to in like, lacrosse? Like, who's someone that when you get on the floor, you're like, you know, I want to play like them? Mm, well, like, mostly, like, Cody Jameson, as he's, like, a smaller guy like me. You know, like, got to use your speed and other things like that. And he's someone that's really good at that. So I thought, yeah, I want to play like that guy. You did play for the Arrows this year, but now you are on a St. Catharines. Yeah, that was like a difficult transition, I guess you could say. Okay, like like what was was it difficult just because, you know, a different group of friends or teammates or the environment or like what was what was difficult? Um, probably the change up right in the middle of the season, like uh, I played with the Six Nations guys all my junior career, know them, know how they play, and now I got to switch into a new team, new coaching staff. Like all that's like kind of hard because you got to try and pick up everything really fast. Who are some of the players that uh, you did grow up playing with? Like some of the players that you would say that like if you know if you had if you had one line and you're like these are like my four go-to guys I want to be on my line with me, and you grew up playing with them, who would they be? Mm, for the right side, I'd probably say, like, my brother Ross, uh, Davin Bomberry on the right side. Then left side would be me. Um, it's hard to think. Um, maybe somebody like Dale and John Hill. Played with him a lot. Um, and growing up, I played with Brendan Anderson a lot, and big guy playing with a little guy we work together like well yeah i think you had mentioned that on the show that they they work very well together i did i did yeah brenny's like uh we called him up for the riverman one game and uh our head coach at the time when brenny come walking in our coach went come up and goes who the hell's the tree <laughs> <laughs> how was it playing for steve toll uh, so I'll switch over and hit his tense guy, right? Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great coach, actually. Knows how to, like, fire the boys up at the right time. Like, knows when to, like, be intense, kind of, and when to, like, be a little bit more laid back. What was, like, what was the vibe once you got into, like, that St. Catherine's dressing room of, like, oh, um, you know, someone here is from Six Nations? Did it kind of throw, did it kind of make everyone, like, you know, up their game, or did it kind of be like they were standoffish, like, oh, I don't want him to take my shine away, maybe from someone who was already their key player? Uh, I would say a lot of them were, like, kind of, like, worried that I was going to come in and take a spot, but I don't know. They just, Like, it's middle of the season, so we all know how people play, and me being up there and, like, the points and stuff, so they kind of seen it as, like, an add-on. Like, okay, we got another good player we can pass the ball to. So they're more encouraging rather than just like maybe not let's not pass him the ball because we don't want to give him that time to like show off in front of our fans who are already dedicated to like the way that they play the game type of thing. Sure, they he's added you because you're obviously leading scorer for the arrows, and then they wanted to add some offensive punch to their game. And you guys made the second round, right? So at least at least you made it a little further than the arrows getting treated. You don't want your old team to yeah, you want them to win for your buddies, but then also too you don't want them to win and and you could have been on the team. So yeah, that was a big worry. Then uh, (laughs) would you say like um, another player? Would you look up? Obviously, your dad was a really good player, and then would you say Vern? Like your brother Vern played a big part. Obviously, he's a good player, fast, slick hands, and 
<laughs> like uh, obviously you're close in age with Rossi. So would you say kind of you guys all playing in the backyard probably played a big part in your guys' career? Oh, yeah, definitely. He showed me like a lot of things like him with his, like you said, fast hands. He mm -hmm. showed me how to do like the things like hitting like the stick, like certain mm -hmm. ways how to hit it because you're not as big. You can't push guys and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But like I said, because a funny story, it was uh, we were playing the field across a few years ago, and I know like Vern stripped. I think this guy was Daryl Robinson. He was playing for like Halifax at the time, and the guys were like, "Where did he play?" And I was like, "Going to Nymo Senior B last year because he's stripping out of all guys." <laughs> right? and, uh, you know, he's a good player, and, and then I'm sure you guys, as his younger brothers, you just see that going up and then learning. Right, makes you guys even better. Right. <laughs> what's What's funny is um, through the years I've I've I coached Vern. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, your other brother, Tyden, I coached Vernon and Tyden. They played with uh, my son, Lane. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of road trips when I had Vernon and Tyden with me. And then a few years go by, and I'm coaching my son, Owen. And then I got Rossi and Thunder road tripping with me, too. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I've had the privilege of coaching four guys from the same family. And uh, honestly, honestly, Thunder, there was a lot of a lot of comparison between Vernon's style of play and yours. Um, the only difference I can see is... Um, Vern is an all-around player, and you are a bigger offensive threat because there are times Vern can transition back. I've, I've watched you play. You can too, but you are looked at as an offensive threat more so. And Vern's got stuff that can't be taught, and I've seen it in, in all of you. The stuff that can't be taught is, is floor IQ, and I've seen it in all of you. And, like, the only, the only one that I kind of chuckled at um, was Titan because he's a big kid. And a uh, little bit of a hothead. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> for sure. So when I would get on his case, he would turn right around and look at me and go, look, what? No. <laughs> Just chill. Just chill. <laughs> we need you on the floor. But, I mean, I, I've only seen your uh, younger brothers play a, a few times, but I see it in them, too. They got stuff that you can't teach. All of you do. So I commend you guys for that. Thank you. You're welcome. So, like, before the Arrows, um, you, did you play for the Rebels at all, or did like did you just go straight into the Arrows? Um, well, I tried out for the Arrows in that little COVID bubble yeah. that they had there, and uh, I didn't make it, but uh, I played in that little Rebels COVID bubble they had going to a few tournaments and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then how, how was, like, uh, how, old, how old were you during the COVID bubble? I think, like, 17, 18, maybe? Okay, so during that time of, like, no school, um, you know, it's probably hard to get out and see your friends. Uh, I don't know if you had a girlfriend at the time. Like, there's just so many different things of, like, social anxiety and not being able to get out um, and not being able to play lacrosse. How was that on you? You know, being at that 17, 18 age, it was just like, oh, I can't even go play lacrosse right now because it's, like, it's medicine for me. I can't do that. So, like, like uh, right now because of COVID. So, like, uh, how was that for you? Uh, well, during COVID, it was very, like, frustrating and all that, but uh, I was very fortunate. I had um, my two younger brothers, Chaz and Lawrence, and then my older brother, Ross. We were all together all throughout COVID, and we would just be like, okay, we're going to throw on the gloves, go into the backyard, and just go beat each other up, have a little two-on-two -two game. I feel like that's where like all the best like uh, learning in lacrosse comes from. Just throwing on like uh, bucketing gloves, sometimes getting in scraps and taking them off, and you know, <laughs> seeing seeing who can hang. And if you can't hang with your people who in the backyard, then you might not want to like actually go out there and like even show up at a tryout or practice. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that's lucky of having those siblings, right, close in age, and then you can get out and get a good game going. Would you say this summer of you and Rossi not? Him moving up to senior, was that different of kind of starting your junior career with him and then now him being in senior, of you trying out to play yourself? Yeah, it was very, like, different kind of because um, there's this thing me and Ross do is, like, when we can see each other getting, like, frustrated, we're holding the ball too long on mm -hmm. our side. Like, we can just look at each other, give a little chin, and then he knows to come run way over so he can receive the ball. And that's something I did not have this year. Like, I couldn't look at a certain guy and be like, yo, I need you to come all the way over here to receive the ball. Mm -hmm. Guys in St. Catherine don't know the chin. No. Nope. Like you said, too, <laughs> for you guys, it looks out that one's a righty, one's a lefty. Mm -hmm. So you got you can kind of play that both sides, right? And like I'm sure, obviously, next year you want to play senior A, but even if you play Riverman and stuff with them, I'm sure that would be a good getting that connection back. Do you think this year you're going to go back to college, or are you thinking of throwing your name in the draft? Um, I was definitely thinking of throwing my name in the draft, just seeing how that plays out. I had a great, like, last year of junior so i'm hoping for the best 
I'm not going to lie. I had one junior college coach. He was hoping to steal you over from OCC. He's like, I want to try to get him in here and get him going. I won't say the name of the guy, but I figured, like you said, you had a really good deal last year. Junior, you played for, let's say, with the Arrows. You have Stu Montour. Then he's assistant coach at Halifax. You got Steve Toll. Hopefully Panther City stays around or he'll probably latch on somewhere else. So at least you're kind of playing in front of those NLL coaches mm -hmm. where they've seen you play. And plus all of those other teams, too, they got guys that are all players and stuff. So I'm sure somebody will pick you up. Mm, yeah, hoping for it. Who are some of the players that you would want to give? Uh, like you said that like uh, you didn't really have any of that connection with uh, St. Saint, uh, Saint it's not Maybe not not connection, but like... Um, like, uh, you couldn't give the head nod to anyone, but who's some of the players on there that you could kind of, you know, maybe wasn't the head nod, but you, you know, they could, uh, you could, they could hang with you. Mm, there's a few guys, um, for sure, Keaton Zavitz, mm -hmm. like, um, Ty Stainhouse, like, mm, Colton Armitage, Christian LeFay. Those guys could just like ball out with me, like, just freelance ball. Did you ever get to play with any of those guys in any tournaments or like kind of kids tournaments and stuff back in the day, like a Steinhouse's kid or anything? Or no, it was all just fresh. The mm. first time playing with a lot of those guys. Yeah, it was all pretty just fresh, mm -hmm. mostly just playing against them. Yeah, yeah, but like you said, they obviously they knew you were a good player, and like you said, it was just kind of coming in a mid season, where that's where it's like you didn't really get to go through practices and trials. But like you said, you guys put up you put up a lot of goals. You made it to the second round, so at least you kind of capped off your junior your career in a good way. Yeah, for sure. So do you think that, like, um, because obviously when you went to play with St. Catharines, you weren't able to bring, you know, the people that you normally played lacrosse with with you, do you think you're going to want to come back to the Arrows now? Or do you think you're going to stay out there? Or do you even have that option? Again, I don't know the politics of how people get traded and all that this stuff. This is so. your last year, correct? Yeah, this is my last year. So next year I'm just hoping hopefully play a senior eight ball a little bit, but mostly like Riverman. I got a spot for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. That was going to lead to... I was, I was leading there. I was <laughs> leading there. Um, we we did have... We do have the pleasure of having uh, Thunder's brother Ross play for us this year. Um, phenomenal player. Young guy. You know, he's got... He's got fresh wheels for days. Can go and go and go. And I had already asked him. I said, think we can get Thunder next year? Yeah, I'll, I'll put a bug in his ear. Like you said, it's good for you guys too because you guys had a lot of veteran players. So then, of there hasn't been too many guys that have came in new from junior. So at least then adding another good younger guy, you'll have for years to come. Right? Well, and the thing about our our veterans is um, they're very welcoming. Like, mm -hmm. There's, I mean, rookie might have to clean the dressing room or clean the bus, but I think that's that's part and parcel with any team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they're you know they're very they're very welcoming. They're very protective. I mean. Nobody picks on our rookies, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and if especially if they jump into a to a role like Rossi has, mm -hmm. you, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna pick on Rossi. Even, but that goes across the board. Nobody picks on any of our players. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had uh, Rod Squire um, went at one guy in our last series because he had slashed one of our guys behind the play. Mm -hmm. and so our players got their got each other's back. So I mean, Thunder coming on board. There's. Of course, there's going to be the you know first year senior jitters, but wherever you end up, be it with us, be it with the Chiefs, wherever you end up, just know that every team's going to protect you. Especially when we got guys like Tyson Bomberry. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, would you, uh, would you, like, I feel like some players want to take those stepping stones. Like, maybe like uh, they want to play for the Rebels, then go to the Arrows, they want to play the Rivermen, then go to the Chiefs, or do you just want to go straight to the Chiefs and then like move up, or do you want to take those steps first? Mm, I would prefer to take those steps like you know everybody's got to build up to where they're like the best spot and I would like prefer to like take my time so I can like improve on little things that like if I get up there it'll be costly mistakes. I feel like that's always the the smarter route um, because I feel like uh, some of those players who goes go from like 0 to 100 like real quick they'll end up uh, getting indulging in like too much stuff and it'll be just be like oh yeah you could have been this you could have been that you know things like that so what kept you motivated what kept you um like focused on lacrosse like you know like you're young you could be out in these out in these streets you could be out partying you could be doing whatever you want to do you're a good looking guy you could be out doing whatever you want what kept you focused on saying i want to show up for practice and i want to be the best player that i can be mm, i think it really just comes from a love of the game kind of thing like I've always wanted to improve myself and be better in like every aspect as of like partying and stuff like that. That stuff just never really interests me too much. Like, yeah, a good time with your friends hanging out. Yeah, that's fun and all. But 
I prefer to like, you know, go to bed early, wake up and go do what you got to do, go hit the gym or whatnot. So like, um, and are you, are you going to be at, um, going back to school or anything like that or going to school for lacrosse or are you just playing box? Uh, I'm just going to be playing box. Sometimes I, I like to ask players like, is there a plan B? Because even though that like you can go play pro and all these things like that, but that, that can't be it. It can never just be it just to play pro and then be a, like, a, yeah, like being a coach and then being a GM. All these things are like stepping stones. But like, what do you see as the ultimate goal of yourself as like, you know, just like a, a human being, a lacrosse player? Like, what do you see yourself as like 50 years old? What do you see like having a bunch of trophies like this? Like we got a big trophy here. Like, What's your goals in life? Like even outside of lacrosse? Mm, just to be a good role model like you know that's all I really care about is like not showing anybody really like the bad and stuff like that trying to keep people away from that as of lacrosse yeah I think it's a great place for it to like show kids that you can do other things than just be like you know on the res you can go out to schools you can go out to different places and it can take you places yeah like it's the creator's game right it's medicine it can take you wherever you need to go wherever life may want to take you yeah and uh, so, like, the Rivermen, where do you see the Rivermen could take uh, Thunder Hill? Um, well, I'll, I'll a, use... An, another, uh, another one of these? Uh, yeah, we can probably uh, bring that back next year. Um, but, I mean, th Thunder's, Thunder's right. Like, uh, so many players get caught up in partying, and, and they get starstruck. You know, they get, they get thrown right into the spotlight, and some of them absorb it and are able to run with it. Some of them can't handle it. Um, there's, uh, like partying will, partying will always be there. Lacrosse, lacrosse is, uh, in, in everybody's life, it varies. Some people may get 10 years out of it. Some may get 20, some may get 30, but there's a time limit on it. Um, so after, after X amount of years of playing, you know, your, your, your body might fail you. Your mind still wants to go. Your heart still wants to go, but will your knees keep up? Will your hips keep up? Will, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are elbows, will your shoulders keep up. So there is, there is, it's good to have a plan B. Um, so Thunder's right about that, you know. It's, it's in his mind at this young age to put life in lacrosse first over party. And, and, and I, I'm getting to see that more and more with our youth. Um, I'd like to see Thunder help us win another one of these, um, OLA Senior B Trophy. It's, uh, it's my first one. So and uh, did, you, did you ever know it was a beaver on there? I didn't. I didn't actually until you pointed that out. <laughs> Did any of you know that, that there was a beaver on the top of that trophy? <laughs> I've I seen it before, but I never even paid attention to it. It's very <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very Canadian trophy, and here it is on the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. I know your brother had a good career, a good start to junior with the Rebels this year. Were you pretty proud of that, him stepping in and doing good? Yeah, I was very proud of that, but... Uh... Like, he can always be doing more and stuff, but, mm -hmm. yeah, I was very proud of him. He stepped into a role of, like, mm -hmm. just coming out of midget, and now he's going to be, like, one of the top goal scorers on that yeah. team. Like, if you're even, he pretty like pretty much led them, him and the Joe Squire on that left side. And like, I thought he would get off, so maybe next year Arrows pick him up, and that would be good, too. And Or even if he stays Rebels, right, and goes for a run. Yeah, he's always got, like, you know, like, you have like a couple of years of junior, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with staying junior B for a couple and then moving up when you're yeah, ready. Definitely. Because you get into the age now, you'll throw them on some teams, some down below teams or whatever tournament teams you guys are all on together. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I definitely yeah. want him playing in those men's tournaments. Down below. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny though, because Thunder had mentioned it would be in during the COVID, the, 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 the COVID bubble. Um, I was GM of the Rebels that, that year and, um, it was right around this time when we had tryouts. Mm -hmm. We were having tryouts in late July, early August, and then we started having a couple of tournaments like now. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the season was done. It, it was really weird to have a tryouts when generally playoffs are in full swing in Junior B. But yeah, that was that was something else. And we had to we had to practice in Fisherville in an outdoor rink with no glass or no screen around it or nothing. And like you said, those COVID years is really only gave kids like a good three to four years of junior, which obviously, right. But it's like, you did good with your junior careers. You put up the points and everything like that. And there's still the tape, especially playing junior A where those games are on YouTube for those GMs. Like I know, let's say the Georgia swarm GM, I heard he goes back and watches the, even though he's in the States, he watches those snipers games. And so it's good. A lot of things are getting streamed now. And then those pro scouts, no matter where they are, can kind of take a look and, and kind of see who's on tape and who's impressing. 
Yeah, that's definitely a great part of all these games being filmed. Yeah. Yeah, and a, and a lot of them you can watch live and rewatch and rewatch. And, you know, back in the day, if a player was being scouted by somebody, a scout had to come to the area and watch six, eight teams looking for one or two players in a span of four days. And then they'd have to go back to wherever they came from and either f physically get on the old rotary phone or mail out invites to camp so that it was a it was a way longer process now a couple of clicks on your phone or on your computer and you got the highlight reel and you got a hold of the kid within a matter of a minute i'm sure you'd anywhere to draft should be your favorite team but i guess in because of the hoga buffalo you'd say it'd be your favorite team mm, yeah i would say that would probably be my favorite spot mm -hmm. so you would want to play for buffalo if you had your uh, you had your choice yeah, if I had a choice to pick what NLL team I wanted to go to, Buffalo is definitely number one because it's like, you know, close close enough to here and it's like all around and like center for like all a bunch of natives to show up. I'm sure if San Diego picks you up, though, you'll still be happy to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Jinx, jinx yourself and end up with Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm not saying Vancouver's bad, yeah. but it's kind of far from That's home. That's pretty far. Or what about, weren't you guys talking about this uh, last episode, a Texas team? Isn't there a Texas Pan team? Yeah, Panther City. But, yeah, uh, they may fold, they may sell. It's up in the air right now. Uh, they, they're in a great city. I, I lived in that well, city like, as a kid. Fort Worth is nice, Texas yeah. has got money. Right? Fort, yeah. Fort Worth, Texas, I lived there as a kid. The, the guy had part partial money. The guy also partially owned owns the OKC Thunder. But they just really weren't getting crowds, so I think he was probably losing cash. And The OKC Thunder, isn't that uh, the guy from um, Shark Tank? <laughs> yeah, so it's not, it's like the, he's just like, got money and like he's a part owner, where some of those guys, maybe he owns 10%, right? But oh, okay. So he kind of owns them, and then he owns the Dallas Wings WNBA team, and then Panther City plays out of the same arena as the Dallas Wings. But it's in Fort Worth, and then they said they weren't getting a lot of people from Dallas will travel to Fort Worth. And I thought it would grow a little bit better down there. I know the field games really picked up. Uh, Highland Park, Texas is where, like, the Cowboys owners' kids go and stuff. And then they're big time field. They were getting a lot of football kids putting lacrosse sticks in their hands, and then they're going places. But It's funny. I had a chat with uh, a school in Tyler, Texas, during COVID, mm -hmm. and was going to go coach. And because of COVID, I didn't go. And I uh, spoke to them again last Saturday. Um didn't really want to try to relocate until minimum new mm -hmm. year and uh, pass it off to a young man that, I, that I've that i had the privilege of coaching. Um, don't know what the outcome is because mm -hmm. I haven't talked to him. Uh, mm -hmm. Blake, Blake McDonald. Oh, nice. I put him in contact with that school, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping he gets the job. Yeah, yeah. Blake, Blake's a good coach. Too. He's done stuff at Davenport and a lot of, like, he, he coached, he's doing a lot of travel across. He coached and, the high school in Michigan, led him to two state championships. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like you said, plus, too, if he's he signed to uh, Las Vegas as right now, so maybe Texas quick flight to Vegas for him for the NLL. Yeah. It's unfortunate what happened to him in the summer. He was mm -hmm. with Peterborough, and they sent him to Brampton. Yeah. And, and then... He's, he's played and, one or two games. And, and then it. Peterborough pulls up his younger brother. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, from Hamilton? <laughs> they pulled up Trevor, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was something else, yeah. That's an interesting topic I never actually really thought about from a coach's perspective. Like, um, what is, like, uh, what's the process of that? Like, let's say that... Uh, Let's say I'm a 33-year-old player, you know, my heyday is behind me, uh, I'm still in shape, and I want to get out there and I want to coach, you know, I'm, I'm really good at stick handling, I'm really fast, but, uh, you know, I can't take a bang anymore, so I want to go coach. What would that person have to do to go out there and, you know, maybe coach? Well, um I can tell you right now, there's not a lot of money in coaching. <laughs> so it's literally just like the passion? It's 90% yeah. love of the game, 10%, I hope the team pays for my lunch kind of thing. <laughs> oh, but, shit. But I mean, when you get... When not you even get, the water's uh, free, eh? Well, when, when you get to certain, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, colleges, a lot of schools, there's, there's, a, there's a stipend they give you. There's uh, per diems that you can get. Um, oftentimes, if you're offered a coaching position with a, a, a high school or a, or a college or university, they do pay you for the season. Um, they per a lot of them prefer that you you have some kind of uh, teaching background or something, so you can join the staff of the school as well. Uh, and, and then it le it can lead into you know, if, say you want to run help run a, a club program throughout throughout the summer when school is off, or um, help run camps or something. Then that that f will help you financially a little bit, but um, unless you're ending up coaching at a private academy or a, a, a college or university with a lot of money and you have a really good coaching background, good resume and stuff. I mean, they a lot of them, the prerequisite is 
um, they prefer player or coaches who have college university playing experience. So oftentimes they want to, they want somebody young and 33 is not that old as far as a coach goes, but they want somebody who is up with the times basically. And like for me to go back and coach high school, um, I, I would probably be trying to teach them a lot of box stuff because I'm more of a box coach. But um, on the other side of that coin, a lot of these schools want box style coaching because that's what's getting drawing better players in is box lacrosse background. Like was it ten years ago? A lot of the a lot of the northeastern schools and colleges and universities wanted a Canadian player because the, of the box history. It's kind of like you said, the Westbergs, Jeremy Nobles, Lyles, mm-hmm. Zed, mm-hmm. Zed coming from a box background. Mm-hmm. Like there was a while there where it was like every team had at least a couple Canadians, and especially a lot of these new schools. Like let's say you're playing for from playing Brooklyn last year. I'm like what gloves does the guy have? I look it up after some school in Alabama that's D two. Like mm-hmm. I, I was talking to a guy yesterday. He's a face off guy for Robert Morris, and we were talking about a lot of. D2 schools like Lemoyne, Mercyhurst, Merrimack. Mm-hmm. He's Lindenwood. I guess Lindenwood, he said now, took away lacrosse altogether. But a lot of these D2 schools are moving up to D1. And then a lot of just new schools are starting D2 lacrosse. Mm-hmm. So it's almost kind of been the transition of where there was like 32 D2 schools back in like 2008. And now there's like 70. Well, and that's with some of the main programs moving up to and, D1. And you, you look at like um, – OCC, they, they, them in Syracuse kind of started the box lacrosse player recruitment mm-hmm. and it went, it went crazy. Um, like a, a lot of our, a lot of our box guys here went to OCC, you know, Cody, Sid, uh, Wayne and Warren Hill went there. And then there like was a lot of them. Like you said too, it was the crease attackman, but then also Dylan Ward's a goalie, Brett Dobson's a goalie, then, uh. Warren Jeffries, there's been more long poles mm-hmm. that are coming from up north. So they're kind of like a lot of Canadians and natives are playing other positions as well as just uh, just being your scorers. Oh, Blaze Reardon's another prime example. Yeah. He's an NL, uh, he, play, he plays lefty offense and then field across, he was a goalie. <laughs> he said he was just playing like in the kind of backyard or mini sticks in the basement with the guys at Albany. And then they just talked him into going up to Aqui to play junior B. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You work for out. itself, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like there's yeah. and and so there, there's been a lot of a lot of coaching staff that I've met over the years that were recruiting for you know, private academies or or D one two three NCAA schools, a few MCLA schools, uh, NAIA, um, and they they would go to like the Dick's Tournament of Champions or the the IMG National Championships, or they'd go to you know the 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 big Halloween tournament they have in uh, North Carolina. Um, or the turkey shoot. They go to all these tournaments, all these field tournaments, to specifically watch the Canadian teams that are coming to play field across because they have a box background, and that's who they're recruiting. I know for OCC, Charlie <clears throat> Wilbur, I know he's not really around, but then sometimes I, I don't know if he's still in the background there at OCC. Was it Logan Tucson then that recruited you, or how did you get going there? Uh, yeah, that was Logan Tucson who mm-hmm. reached out to me. Nice. And then what was kind of uh, – who were some of the players that you liked and had kind of chemistry with playing there? Um, well, going there, I didn't really know anybody, but mm-hmm. there was a few other natives there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Annalise Dockstader, Greg Elijah Brown, um, the mm-hmm. Hudson Yardis McCumber, like those guys I was comfortable yeah. playing with because I knew they had the box background. Yeah, nice, nice. Like you got guys that you could fit some chemistry with. I think McCumber was still there this past year, right? And then yeah. Obviously, then Elise doing good at uh, Port Coquitlam, and then. So and then Greg Elijah Brown ended up going off to of Syracuse. Like I said, some good players there. Greg Elijah Brown's with the Rivermen. Yep, and he's with the Rivermen as well. So, <laughs> like you said, that. like and then Elise was with Rebels. So I'm sure you had a kind of relationship with him, just kind of being around here last summer. Mm. Right? So. And, and there are guys that are going to other schools too. Like um, a few years ago, uh, there was a Whitlow a Whitlow fella that went to Marquette. Mm-hmm. And Marquette was, I think, was the only NCAA D1 school with lacrosse that mm-hmm. was. That, that was the farthest west at that point was Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And now, like uh, Winter Rivera, he's he's committed to Ohio State. Um, we've been to Ohio State for a tournament, and I know they had a lacrosse program, but Ohio State's known more so, in, in my opinion, for, for football, for softball, and I think I they got to, a pretty good wrestling team. I went to the Ohio, Ohio State camp in, like, 2006. It was a fun time. We won the championship, and I can't remember what age group. But it was, like, must have been, like, the 06, so, like, our group won the – they had um, indoor. They had like really nice fields, and there was Jesse Owens Sports Complex where he, he was a big 
U.S. Olympian runner and stuff, and the whole thing, Jesse Owens with the being African American and Adolf Hitler in Germany and the African American and a Jewish guy won in front of Hitler, the U.S. Olympics. But so they got the whole Jesse Owens complex and. It started lightning and raining, and everybody's like, "Sweet, we can go back to the dorms and relax." Oh no, wait, there's an indoor complex here, so we went and partied in the, and played in there, and uh, it was cool. I ended up getting like Ohio State football poster after, and I ended up getting a couple of Jets guys sign it later on. But like I said, Ohio State, Winter Rivera going there. They're another program, big football team. They're getting better and better with the lacrosse. Fennell mm-hmm. went there, mm-hmm. Jake Withers, Austin Shanks. So they've been getting Canadian guys as well. Then grabbing uh, winners from Cataraugus over there, and. Albany's still getting guys, Hughes, like Bo Hunter went to Jacksonville, another, you know, school yeah, kind of reached yeah. out went there. There was there was a lot of a lot of schools back in the day that blew up my email, you know, they big schools, mm-hmm. school but schools I didn't know had a lacrosse program. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, UNLV, USC, UCLA, but they're club teams because they're MCLA. What a lot of people don't know is MCLA lacrosse in the US is bigger than NCAA when it comes to the number of schools playing it. The fun fact there, I didn't know that Dav, at the time I knew a kid going to da- Davenport, it was after I was done with college, he got money because they're NAIA school. And some of those MCLA schools were actually giving out scholarships. Some schools like Colorado and those bigger, like a Texas, you got to kind of pay yourself a club fee. But then other schools that were sponsored by the, that were MCLA, but still sponsored by the school were giving away scholarships. So it was mm-hmm. kind of a, mm-hmm. well, you think they all had to pay, but then <laughs> I was like, I should have done that. And then you didn't even have to have as good a grade. So I really should have went there. <laughs> so you heard. Yeah. <laughs> Got to throw that out there. Yeah. So you heard. So I hear that you like, um, like from when, um, when you were talking there, you say like you like playing with a lot of like native players. Have you ever thought of playing for like the Can-Am leagues or like the First Nations uh, leagues, teams? Mm. Not really much thought into that. I like grew up watching like the Rivermen and the Chiefs and all that. So my thought was always, okay, those were my next steps when I go into senior. Okay, so there's already kind of like a like what I what I'd call like a blueprint for like someone who's your age. You're like, all right, here's how I got to get to like the NLL type of thing, right? So it goes through Rebels, Arrows, Rivermen, Chiefs. Um, in there, does it ever is there ever like tomahawks or is this kind of you got to you know, you got to go to the Rebels first. Or, sorry, you got uh, River Rivermen. Uh, kind of like I got to go to the Rivermen. Like, if I'm going to be, like, you know, playing at, like, the best, like, place to play in junior, so I'm playing junior A, I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to go up to, like, the next best one, so Rivermen. So what other leagues around here would you ever consider or what other type of tournaments or other type of... Well, like you said, you played in, a, you got to play, you played junior snipers, and then this year when you came back from OCC, you ended up playing men's snipers. How do you think, did that help your game in the summer playing versus the men in the Arena League and then coming into the summer? Do you think that helped a bit? Or uh, Yeah, I definitely think it did help because I was off lacrosse for a little bit. Like, I came in a little late to that sniper season, so I was a little bit rusty, but yeah, all those guys helped me get right back into it, and I got a groove going, and I kind of just rolled with that groove right into the summer. Yeah, they had a bit of a losing streak. They were losing close games. You joined a couple extra goals they had each game, and then they started winning, right? So, yeah. And obviously, I'm sure NLL you're going, I'm sure Snipers will be one of the teams this year if you go practice squad or if it doesn't work out, right? I'm sure you'll be going back with Darcy and those guys. And yeah, snipers, for yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. Go Bears. <laughs> how was it when you actually had to uh, – Did you? How, how was it when you had to play arrows, like play the arrows, like against them? Um, I actually did not have to play against you didn't the arrows. Have to? Yeah, we went through uh, both of our games against St. Catharines. Now, hypothetically, how do you think that would play out, and who do you not want to see on the floor, and who do you not want to play against? Mm. Like, let's say because they could be your friends, right? And you're just like, I, you know, maybe that you played them one on one before, and you're like, ah, I don't want them to do that to me in front of, in front of so and so or for whatever. I don't know. Mm. Or do you think that you could probably? You could probably go through that whole team. It wasn't really like a worry, kind of. It was just like, all right, these are the guys I got to watch out for. When they come and play me, all right, now I know I got to play two men so I can have another guy in there helping me. And then do you got to go in there and tell, like, uh, obviously your teammates, St. Catherine, be like, okay, watch out for these guys. This guy's good at that. This guy's good at that. He's going to be doing this. He's going to be doing that. This is the head <laughs> nod. You're showing, you're showing them the head <laughs> nod. Was that kind of like the... Uh, I guess what you had to do to give them the one up if it were to come to that. Yes, for sure. I probably would have gave them the rundown the, of the team that I know. And like, 
<laughs> like kind of just like get them ready for it. Yeah, I'm sh- I'm sure when arrows were looking to kind of hey this guy in the last year we're not doing so good and they dealt you. I'm sure they looked okay. We played St. Catharines already the two times, so they knew they didn't have to face you. But was there any other teams that you knew of that they were looking to deal you to, or was it just or did they call and ask where you would want to go or? Uh, they give me like a notice, like yeah, where do you want to go? And I mm-hmm. was kind of just like um. It's kind of like wherever, looking like a playoff team. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, obviously, St. Catharines, they probably thought was next closest, really, right? Mm-hmm. So then uh, I didn't know if it was an orange trail or they don't thought about anything, those teams at all or nothing. But Yeah, just the one team they weren't weren't going to send me to is Peterborough. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <so> I, yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't want to go there. How does that work then? Like, uh, what, So what was the reasoning, I guess, like for the trade? Hmm. I guess you could say I kind of just like was coming to the end of the season, a little bit middle towards the end, and I kind of just got like stuck. Like there was games, like I was putting up like three, four points a game throughout the start of the season, and then towards the end I was getting like maybe two assists, if that. Like I started to have zero point games. And what do you feel was like the – what do you feel like was was the reasoning for that? Was it the chemistry on the floor? Was it like personal life? Was it just you know y- your heart wasn't in it? Like the team wasn't doing wasn't working together? Like what do you think it was? Mm, could have been a number of reasons. I I don't know. Might have been personal life. I just like sometimes when I would show up to the arena, I wasn't fully in it. Like I could I could sit there and tell myself I am. I feel like mm-hmm. I am. Like but. I know when I'm sitting in that room, I'm not fully there. I'm sure it was tough, too, because, like, they were on a losing streak. Then after they traded you, they had Winter Rivera and a couple other guys go back to Junior B, a guy go back to Junior B for Rebels. So I'm sure then there was a bit of a turnover there. I just, I, looking at it from an outside perspective, I just looked at it as they were out of the playoffs and Catherine's was still in the playoffs. You, they All these teams always say, hey, a guy in the last year, Give, you got five years to win a Minto. Let's ship them off somewhere and see if kind of. And then obviously, then they did end up making the playoffs and almost won the first round. And then you guys made the second round, so it still ended up working out anyways. It's, yeah, it they, happens a lot yeah. where you know I, the arrows surprised a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, myself included, because a lot a lot of the a lot of the bigger guns did go elsewhere. Thunder mm-hmm. went to St. Catharines. Winter went back to uh, War Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ron Cogan's boy went back on Adaga. Yeah. Um, Brenny went to the Rebels. Um, so it did look bleak. And, you know, kudos to the Arrows, though, because they dug in. They mm-hmm. found their heart. And so they're going through a little bit of rebuilding. I, th- I think the future is bright there, but that does happen a lot of times when a guy's in their last year, you know, let's give him a chance at a Minto. If, if we can't win it, let's give him a chance. Like years ago, Chad Squire, um, Arrows were... were basement team for a few years chad squire was in his last year they sent him to orangeville he won a minto with orangeville in his last year so it, that that does happen an, an awful lot like yeah even in senior b there was guys that uh last year curtis woodland came to the rivermen at the deadline for a playoff run because he was with clearview and they weren't going to do anything mm-hmm. so they kind of loaned him for the, for the rest of the year you guys got hutchinson as a goal area james gang was done you know boom ship him over yeah. and yeah we brought in drew yeah. hutchie yeah so it's it, it happens it happens a lot and uh you know at the same time you you build good working relationships with other teams in doing that um Innismore was fine with sending Hutchie to us because they knew we were gonna we were gonna do a little better than them obviously we did quite well we have the ola trophy here mm-hmm. um now we're off to the President's Cup, but it, it happens in every league. Yeah, like you said, they've been like uh, it, it, getting traded in junior just means you're good because somebody else wants you, right? Like years ago, Holden Garland, he went from St. Catharines his whole career. He comes out of Rose, Chris Colucci came out of at one point. Uh, Matt Gilray and Tom Ho- Thomas Hogarth have played their, pretty well their whole they played their whole senior A career so far for the Lakers their junior career but at the end of their junior career they got shipped over to Orangeville so it's just you know hey Minto Cup's the hardest trophy to win you only got five years to do it so then guys at the end get you know one team is going to be out and looking bleak then they trade a guy in their last year to give you know it's more or less a respect thing too I it's, think of, it's it's a respect thing it's yeah. a good faith gesture and it, and it builds working relationships between teams like Definitely, yeah. down the road you know we did you this you know, 
do us a solid. And like you said, send you got to, you got to play for one NL assistant in us in Stu, and then you got to go see another coach in Steve Toll, right? So then you learn some different things, and then that transitions to your game to get better now for winter time and mm-hmm. for next summer when you go with Jay or or with the Chiefs, right? So. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. What was something? What was the biggest thing you took away from? Um, I guess learning with another team or like. Um, you know, being uh, under a whole different organization, a whole different, you know, we're not on the res anymore type stuff. Wearing the double blue. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you have to show up with, like, a dress shirt on and all these, like, type of, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, the biggest thing was kind of just, like, that I learned was when you go somewhere, you got to pick it up fast. Like, you don't, you don't have time to be, like, oh, I didn't really get that. Can we go over it a couple more times? Because, like, you're in-game. So, like, you got to pick it up fast or next game you might not get played. Mm-hmm. Did you have five goals right away in your first game with them? Or how many? Didn't you have, like, a whole bunch of goals in your first game with the, with St. Catharines? Um, we, our first game, we were in a different arena for mm-hmm. their home game. We mm-hmm. played against Kitchener. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got two goals that game. Two goals, but I get a few assists. Yeah. And then what game did you Didn't you have five goals at least a couple times this year? Or was it um, seven or something one time? Uh, I got seven points in our very first game with the Arrows against Burlington. Nice. Yeah. And then I got another five goals in that game four of the, Burlington. In the playoffs, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why we just think too, even that was when it came to playoffs, that's when you were finally, you came in <laughs> quick, right? You had to learn. And then by playoff time, you kind of had the connection already rolling. Yeah. We, yeah. we had practice that, that night and mm-hmm. Rossi kept coming to the bench you know, I'd grab a water or whatever. He'd come and sit down. I'm like, mm-hmm. Ross, are you okay? I look over, and he's got his phone sitting on the bench watching Thunder. <laughs> watching Thunder's <laughs> game. Well, well, like you said, a lot of, <laughs> that's respect. Like you said, that's a good brother connection there. Yeah. Right? That's why he's your guy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah. and I've, I've, I've talked with Rossi a lot about it because, like I said, mm-hmm. I've, I've known, known Thunder's family for a lot of years. I had the privilege of coaching four of the brothers in that family um, at some point in their lives or in their careers. And uh, the They've road tripped with me two at a time, but um, I know that their support is there. Like, it doesn't matter who's playing. If, if, if one's playing, you look in the crowd, there's mom, there's two, three, four siblings. They're all there. Well, like I said, I, when I've asked... When I've asked guys before, hey, who do you think is the best arrows of all time? Your dad, Vern Sr., his name gets brought up. I've heard guys say Jammer, you know, say Jammer, Delby Jr., Kimbo, and, and Vern Hill Sr. Those, you know, so like you said, obviously you were too younger. I don't know, did you see him play at all in arrows or no. senior really? No, no. No. But no, I know no. he's a rocket of a shot. I got to play matches with him the one time and he, out in Fergus and he rang that post pretty good. He scored two, <laughs> but that whole net went like this. <laughs> did, you say, did you say you got a hard shot too like him, you think? or? Uh, um, trying to or more placement do you have a hard shot like Vern senior or do you have a well-placed shot like Vern junior yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think it's somewhere in the middle like mm-hmm. uh-huh. i guess it depends i can fire that ball but mm-hmm. i prefer a little bit more placement so like i'm gonna shoot the ball where the goalie's not gonna go mm-hmm. not just whip it past him where he yeah, is gonna go it's hilarious watching watching sonny that's what they call little Vern. Mm-hmm. watching him play because i've seen him run down you know, like kind of like a frying pan, point, and then just go. And Donnie, don't he shoot hard? Boop. That and same that same field season, he asked if he could use my long pole because he just wanted to mess around with it. He ended up scooping the ball off off the draw, running down. I think he scored. And then he went again and had an assist. And then he's like, "Hey, do you mind if I take another run at LSM with this?" He's like, "I'm like, hey, you didn't even check anybody yet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've had him playing field lacrosse for for us too, and I, it used to be funny because. Vern was the smallest guy on the team, mm-hmm. and he's standing there like this, holding the long pole, leaning on it, and he's only at half of the stick. Right? <laughs> There's still another three feet of stick above him, but same same back then. Even he was he's a wizard with it. But um, that, that's that's what I often wonder because I've watched you play and well placed versus power. Like I said, I like the guys too. Like uh, there was this guy Joe Herman. I went to played a little bit of lacrosse with him on Long Island. He was a two-time All-American at Nassau Community College and once at New York Tech. And he, I guess, didn't start playing lacrosse till 11th grade. He was always a basketball, football guy. But kind of being that cornerback, he was always really good at reading guys' eyes and picking it off. And I think Vern Jr., he does a good job, too, at picking off those passes, right? You throw it on the way, he's going to put a stick out there, get it, and then be up the floor. Well, he's, as he got older, Vern, Vern Jr., little Vern, um, ended up playing more defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Thunder had touched on it, you 
where what to do because you're not going to push anybody around when you're when you're 145 pounds mm -hmm. but it's, it's the iq it's the iq that i see in all of these guys and i mean again filthy plug here you, we got a spot for you on a river man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um i have another question i think i asked warren this um um when he was on but who would you, when you go out there, like, uh, whether they be your friend or not, or they just be another player, who do you see out there as, like, an op? Someone who is just like, oh, man, I got to play against them. You know they're going to be talking shit to you. You know they're going to be bugging you. You know they're actually really good so they can stand by what they're doing. Who's someone that you just you don't want to go up against sometime? Uh, somebody I grew up against playing, um, like, my whole life. Uh, he's not playing right now. He's, like, injured. But uh, Isaac Squirehill. <laughs> Ike. Yeah. That guy was an asshole on defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can talk a little trash. <laughs> yeah, when he stopped you, he definitely let you hear it. Mm -hmm. I feel like like I don't I don't know the person, but did he would, would he just like walk over you and just be like, yeah, I fucking just knocked you right yeah, over. Like yeah. you couldn't do shit. Yeah. Like, sit, stay down type. Yeah. Yeah. Those are always the best players though, because uh, yeah, you need you need some of those on the team. Just to just to keep everyone in line. Mm -hmm. See, and, and Ike's young too. He's he's like what is he same age as you? Or yep. you, yeah, yeah so I'm saying he's he's a guy you probably grew up playing midget and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What would, what would be one of your better uh, memories from minor lacrosse? Like what tor tournament or a big goal or you got anything you kind of remember? Um, not really. Maybe just like uh, maybe one good shot I had playing for First Nations in midget. Uh, we came down on a fast break, and I was on the completely wrong side. I have no clue why, but uh, <laughs> let this huge twister go. I'm, like, folding back the other way, and, like, I bring it back short. And, uh, yeah, that goalie's stick, like, went completely the wrong way. Just felt great about that one. <laughs> what what team was that versus? Um, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, nice, nice. So you want to play for Buffalo. If you had a choice, you would want to play for Buffalo next year. Rivermen or Chiefs. What's your thoughts on the Chiefs this year so far? Um, I've actually haven't been like around the res too much, so I haven't got to watch those guys play. But just knowing their lineup, like I can look up their lineup and be like, yeah, this is a great team. What did you think of the two games they did lose? Because now we're on. Um, we are filming this. Uh, what's the? I don't even know what today is. Today's Wednesday. So yeah. So it's between game three and game it's, four. It's the twenty first of August. Yeah. So game three just ended. Was uh, was last night. So up to game three. So what, what have you think of the series so far up to game three? It's been a good series though. Like uh, like I said, with the names the Chiefs have and stuff, I think they should be dominating like they did with the last game. Like I said, last game you could tell. Uh, Larson Sundown was out of the lineup. They moved a bigger body, Brian Cole up, kind of the ball carrier. It and then uh, I thought their defense really like you could tell Peterborough wasn't comfortable. Like I thought the Peterborough, they were doing a lot of passing. They weren't getting those good looks, and they were either either getting just passing too much. The shot clock was running out, or somebody was missing the ball, or somebody on the Chiefs was tipping it. So like. Yeah, they had five three, and they didn't score at all for two full court, full full two periods. So, well, last night's game, I I watched the defense. They um they played a lot of wall defense, mm -hmm. and they they was you know they were they were not getting caught in the seals. I, mm -hmm. I saw that, um, and just good old footwork and re reading the picks, knowing when they were coming. They, yeah, they they kept Peterborough to a minimum. Yeah, they were locked down, and like, and then for the Chiefs, it almost seemed like they were getting to the net easy. Dane Smith. Jammer the one time just took it, you know, with a purpose right in. He had three – the Jammer having three goals, I think he might have even had five points. And Eli McLaughlin, I think, had a hat trick. So mm -hmm. some of those guys were kind of stepping up in the absence. Yeah, there was there was, uh, there was was old guys that had to get back and play D. I don't know mm -hmm. whether they were assigned that or just got caught in transition. Mm -hmm. or I think I saw I saw Brendan Bunbury back on defense mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, knows the systems. I mean, if you're, if you're a good old guy, you can be a good D guy because you know what you're – what you're supposed to be doing and you know what you know what these guys are going to do to try to beat you because you do mm -hmm. that when you're on the other end of the floor um dane played defense there game one i would do i don't know if it was game two because i didn't go to peterborough but mm -hmm. you know he was back on d playing tranny too so there's a good rotation there i mean when you you can get dane smith playing both ends uh bomber playing both ends jammer plays both ends so a lot of times mm -hmm. too so for them guys to be able to rotate through like that that's that says a lot for mm -hmm. their athletic ability and their iq too yeah, I was wondering how they were going to bounce back uh, after the two losses just because, you know, um, 
Like, were they going to bounce back, like, aggressively with, like, how they did? They won with 10 goals, or was it just going to be, like, you're just going to slide by? Because they couldn't just slide by. They needed to win with something that was like, yeah, we're back. We're here. We're ready to play. We're good to go. Does Randy Stotts play tomorrow? It looked like he took a chop or something. It looked like his fingernail or something was messed up. He left yeah, the game last yeah. night. I'm sure they'll tape something up, and he'll be in the lineup. Um, the big, That'll be the big thing is, mm-hmm. can they pull off another win in mm-hmm. Peterborough? I'm sure that, that, the Mem Center there. goes nuts. When when you're a regular season game, they got four thousand mm-hmm. fans in there, so that's it's huge. You can pull off a win there. Like I, I remember walking in there years ago with a with a junior team, and some of those players had never been to the Peterborough Mem Center, and they were just in awe just of the building, and it was empty. So I can imagine what it's like with four thousand fans in there. Four thousand fans. I just go there. They'd all boo me. Four thousand people be, all at once. Boo. Be like me going to Aurora. <laughs> oh, oh all right. Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Have you guys uh, followed the Alora talk? What is it? Have you have you you played the the Junior B Alora right Mohawks? You played uh, you played against them. No, I actually did not get to play against them. He okay. just played the bubble season. So who did you guys play then? Hamilton, Mark. It was the Markham tournament. And then you what? You guys go to Owen Sound? Was we, it? Or? We were in like Wireton or something. Yeah, <laughs> one of them. Yeah. Went. That was the one in September, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. I don't even remember. We Hamilton was there. Yeah, but I honestly don't remember what other teams was it. Was outdoors there. that one? Because that no, was it was. They were indoor. That yeah. one was indoors. That was, was it? That was they. They were trying to do an every child matters. Was it that? That, that kinda, was that. One. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. They were Owen Sound was trying. Was it out of the reserve or? It was in. It was in Wyerton. Yeah, Wyerton. So they were trying to bring it to like a reserve closer to them, and then have the rebels and some teams come up and kind of play a game, which was cool and it was different. Different for them, right? To kind of yeah. It was. It was a good day. Like mm-hmm. it was, kind of almost had a festival atmosphere. Like there was. Uh, Vendors outside, like just off the parking lot. Every, I couldn't find my players half the time. There was an ice cream shop up the end, end of the parking lot. Everybody was gone there all the time. But it was, but yeah, that was weird because we were, it was in September. <laughs> Did you do the future arrows though? Uh, yeah, I played in that. Yeah, so that was, that was pretty good, right? Like get some, got some free gloves and stuff from the arrows. And like you said, it was tough because that year, so what it was was OLA or Junior A let the guys that were last year in 2020 play that 2021 season so like the arrows and other junior a teams literally had last year 2020 guys and last year 2021 guys so it's pretty much that was like the only time it was tougher for the younger guys right they kind of of playing here we'll take some guys in the last year then they had that futures game to kind of give some young guys a weekend to play other younger teams other like so kitchener had their draft pick and younger guys play and you guys did all right that weekend right yeah we did pretty good in that i thought so yeah so why, why day I asked you if you've ever played against the Laura is because the whole big controversy about the Laura Mohawks, you know, I said some things on here that I still stand by. Um, one being, I, I really feel like they don't know what they want to be because their logo isn't a Mohawk. The, the dude represents uh, Plains tribes. Um, I've kind of had it out on social media with a few people about it. And I'll, I said it before and I'll say it again. If you're going to honor and respect our, our people and our culture, don't be calling me a dirty Indian and a wagon burner while you're chanting, let's go Mohawks, especially when you're playing against a team that is mostly Mohawk or, for for example, they just they just beat out the Gunawagi Mohawks. You're playing against a team from a full Mohawk community still saying, let's go Mohawks. There was somebody called me out. Um, her post got flagged. I couldn't even comment back. But that's neither here nor there. The point is she was calling me out on things I said. Yeah, I said them. One of the things that I said was I hadn't been to the arena to know what renovations happened or something similar to that. And she took it literal. You haven't been to the arena, but yet you were there in May 2024. Yeah, I was. Doesn't mean that I wasn't at the arena during renovations, but I was there in May 2024, and it's still happening in, in 2024. The point being... One of the comments that came out was your management allowed us to be called the Mohawks. And I said, what management? Turns out Six Nations Council had said it was okay for the Alora Mohawks to be called the Alora Mohawks. I guess somebody from the organization came down, gave a presentation to council, convinced them, yes, it's okay. Um, you can use the Mohawks name. The last council meeting was the last one, or maybe, there might even be, I, I can't put a number on which council meeting it was. It was just very recently, when it might have been last week, week before. It was just last Tuesday. It was on social media, Facebook Live. This meeting was on Facebook Live. 
um, at one hour and three minutes, it is mentioned about the Alora Mohawks, and council is rescinding that letter of agreement of approval, whatever they did, saying that it was okay for the Alora Mohawks to be called the Alora Mohawks. Six Nations Council is rescinding that. So they are not in agreement with allowing them to be called the Mohawks anymore. I don't know whether it was because of this show, whether it was because of me, Dea, anybody here, I don't know. But was, I, but was I, the original one like from years ago is what they were saying, trying to say? Well, and with the whole truth and reconciliation thing coming in a few years back, there's been a lot of sports teams that have changed their names, mm -hmm. um, not just minor sports here in Ontario, but across North America. Yeah, the Guardians, uh, the yeah. Commanders, right? So, and like we said, a lot of the Burlington Chiefs became the Blaze, and mm -hmm. a lot of teams, even Aquasystem Thunder, right? They switched their name to Thunder from the Indians, so Mohawks were the only team there, um, so really. Mississauga went from Tomahawks. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. They're they call Badgers, them. I think, now or something. So, like you said, a lot all these teams were changing. They were the even uh, Center Wellington Mohawks was the minor. They became Center Wellington River Hawks. Yeah. So it was literally just the junior B team that stayed. They actually are playing right now at 5 p.m. on Dogger Red Hawks. Well, they probably just got done. Yeah. But it's the point is they're they're pushing and pushing that they still want to be called Mohawks, but they're not Mohawk. <laughs> they're in Mohawk territory. There, I said it. They're still within the Haldeman Treaty. Mm -hmm. I said it again. I don't have an issue with saying it because it's it's historic. It's part of the real history. Mm -hmm. So if you want to honor and respect my culture, stop calling yourself something you're not. How would they feel if I walked in with that ca Caucasian shirt on with, yeah, the, yeah. with the blonde guy with the dollar signs? And I said to somebody, I'm just honoring and respecting your culture. Mm -hmm. I bet I would get attacked for wearing that before I even got to defend myself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, the whole argument was, should they be allowed to hang the old Laura Mohawks banners, championships, whatever, back in the arena after it was renovated? I personally don't have an issue with that because you can't change history, mm -hmm. but you certainly don't have to repeat it. Yeah, like you said, they kept those, but then they're new. Like, I would have thought I was a president didn't switch from Mohawks, and then they were going to be River Hawks, just like their minor was, because the minor even switched colors and stuff, where mm -hmm. you could easily still keep that green and yellow and then just be the River Hawks. Like, don't get me wrong. I know I know a few people from Alora, great people. Like, there, I talked to one guy that played um, minor. He's from the center Wellington area. Mm -hmm. He's from the Alora area. He played minor there. He said to me, I'll just say this. There's a reason why I would not play junior B there because he knew the animosity towards us as a people mm -hmm. yet calling yourself a Mohawk. Come on. I know a lot of guys that they said that was the guys who played rebels in like OE no seven and stuff. And they're like, ah, we hate it, Laura. Cause I think they always played them. Obviously some battles and I'm sure things were always said in the stands and different things. Oh yeah. Right? Like I remember playing minor lacrosse mm -hmm. against the Laura and they were like that when I was in novice, mm -hmm. like, come on. Like I think said, they'll I, say something to you, but then say, hey, we're honoring you. But it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't honor us with a racial slur on your, you know, misrepresenting on the jersey and then a racial slur. Oh, man, I, it's right. such misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. it's, like I said, it's not even a Mohawk on yeah, their emblem. Guy, <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> yeah, I think the problem is that, like, um, you know, like, like what you said, like, what are you trying to be and why? Yeah. And just answer the question of why. Everyone else is changing their name. Everyone else is being progressive. Why are you trying to stay, take a step backwards and stay in the part of history that you don't want on the forefront, but yet you still want that name there? Yeah. But you don't want to talk about why. You don't want to talk about anything else. You just want to keep the name. I think it why? looks worse because the minor did. The center Wellington is the minor. They switch, but the junior B just won't. Yeah, well, like what is it about that team? And mm -hmm. they, they can't even get mad at me for saying what I've said because that's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. It was council, city council, town council. I don't know who it was, whether it's Center Wellington, Alora, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But some some council up there are the ones that that's put it out there and said, we will not hang these banners in our renovated arena because it's, it's, it's improper now. So, But I can guarantee when this episode's seen, It'll be my fault that those didn't get hung up there. <laughs> I can guarantee that. At least one person's going to message Dea or me, mm -hmm. blaming me 
because their old 19-whatever Mohawks banner didn't get to hang. I think you're a good guy, Jay. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you know say what? that here in front of camera. <laughs> it's going to be someone who'd be like, I played you when we were younger, something I, like that. And then like, I played for the Allure. We played Six Nations. You were on that team. This was like 40 years ago. Uh -huh, and, whatever, I, and I'll tell them, I, like I chopped you with my stick then, and if you want to put pads back on, I'll chop you again. Yeah. Just get a. It's just a game. Just do it. Have, have a tournament <laughs> for charity. There you go. You have a tournament for charity. And just what? Uh, are you? Have you been watching any of the Minto at all? Or got uh, any? I just watched that uh, last night semifinal Orangeville versus um, Port Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was um, it was a very good game. Trey Deer, he played incredibly well. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, was what did you think of playing over there in the bunny barn and all that? Was it all right? Mm, bunny barn, that's that's always a hard arena to <laughs> yeah. play in. Like you know, they got their crowd screaming. Mm -hmm. They're they're a great atmosphere if you're on the team, but if you're playing against them, yeah. damn. Or Orangeville fans are like, very like you, like you said. That's when a lot of guys were about trade deer or bucktooth last year, and and then different guys would go in there. But they're like, hey, we like them once they're on our team, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Linden Hill this year, right? He's there, so they Lindy, they've been getting yeah. native guys in there now. Linden, did Linden get the start last night? Uh, I didn't watch the start, but yeah, he was in the between the pipes. Good, and Good. like you said, two of. Uh, not even so much the yeah, the arrows didn't make the minto, but you got Lyndon Hill playing for Orangeville, and then Porker Quitlam. You got Amani Mitten, one of their goalies, Six Nations guy, Damani Thomas, Six Nations guy, and then Elise Doxaders played Rebels the last couple of years. He's played down here at two different tournaments and stuff. So definitely some local guys still playing for minto. You, you know, if you if you think about it like this, um, as 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 supportive of our of our teams that Six Nations fans are. And yes, there is a heated rivalry between our fans and Orangeville fans mm -hmm. and Alora fans and Whitby fans and Brampton fans and Peterborough fans. But if you step back and take a look, and I'm pr I, I've, I actually seen one of Lyndon's, might have been one of Lyndon's aunties posted something mm -hmm. similar, and it got me thinking. Is it wrong that they are just as supportive about their teams as we are as supportive as, of ours? Well, like you said too, like uh, here, Orangeville, St. Catharines, there are like some big lacrosse areas, you know, some definitely still some hotbeds of Ontario. So, and then even for Orangeville, they say they got junior C now a couple of years ago. They got B, they say they won't do senior because they think because senior guys want to get paid and different things like that. But they, they say, they, oh, we like the more the amateur aspect, the one guy from Orangeville was saying. But they get behind their teams, their, you know, local businesses sponsor and everything like that. It's well, community. The way it looks, and it's, I'm hoping that is very true, Orangeville is very supportive of Linden, mm -hmm. very supportive of Trey Deer, and, and very supportive of other Native guys that have went and played there in the mm -hmm. past. Although, like you said, playing against them, it's terrible. Playing for them, it looks like it's a whole different atmosphere. So you went to St. Catharines. St. Catharines has been a Six Nations rival forever. So how was it like? How did the fans treat you when you wore the double blue? Hmm. I don't know. I thought it was going to be, you know, a little different coming from Six Nations, but they treated me like they were like I was their own. See, so they supported you because you were in the jersey. They supported their team. Yeah. I thought too it was cool. There's a did, if you've seen that picture on Facebook of all the native guys playing, they all took a picture together. So you had the three guys in Port Coquitlam, two of them from here, one from Oneida, then you had um Linden on Orangeville, Trey Deer on Orangeville, who's from Ganawage, and then McCumber, Ganawage guy, Coquitlam. I don't, I didn't know who the other guy was on Coquitlam, but still, all those teams were being representative and had, you know, native guys playing for them and guys that aren't even from those communities, right? The guys mm -hmm. that went somewhere else to hey, lacrosse took them to a new com new place, new community, new people, you know, new experiences, and then they're playing for a championship, one well, of the bigger trophies in Canada. Some some guys have you know have had great experiences leaving leaving our community to go play mm -hmm. um and ideally you would want the best talent to stay home but if the opportunity is there and they have to go to a different community i would hope that they're treated as one of as one of their own and i would hope that they're treated you know top notch because they're going to help this other team so why not like that, that's a big thing for a lot of players a lot of especially indigenous players is going away to play something and getting homesick and having to come back. 
and like you said too, a lot of guys like going to other places. I think we were touching on this in the first episode I was on of how many guys want to play at some point in their careers for Six Nations teams where we look at the Hudson Shoney teams. And if the guys aren't from here, they have at one point have played Rebels, Arrows, Riverman, Chiefs. And then mm-hmm. even let's say uh, Billy D. Smith, he's a St. Catharines guy. He played a lot of years Chiefs. He talked about he was in the Dean and Smith podcast last year. Don't want to self-promote everybody else, but we're all friends here. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Billy D., they asked him, who's your favorite teammate to play with? And he's like, well, Steinhouse and you know family because his brother-in-law and then Vino and family pretty much grew up playing he literally said he played with him from minor all the way through till the Chiefs traded him to Peterborough and then um, he was like but outside of St. Cath and John Tavares he's like my favorite teammate was Clay the Thrill Hill because he's played with him for the Bandits and then he also played with him on the Chiefs and even uh, it was funny I told him I said hey I liked your podcast when I seen him last year at the Arrows thing he's like yeah did you like when I said Clay Hill was my favorite teammate he goes he's here now I'm going to tell him and then he walked over <laughs> and Mont Hill walked across the parking lot to tell him hey yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so it was like yeah, Clay, funny, yeah. Clay was he was uh, a grinder yeah for like, sure. like you said those guys they like coming down here and then these guys end up you know guy from St. Catharines guy from Six Nations end up becoming good buddies and you know mm-hmm. You learn from different yeah, people. Yeah, as, as much as, like you said, as much as so many players want to come here to to, to hone their skills and mm-hmm. learn the craft, a lot of our players do have to venture out to other centers mm-hmm. to, get, to get what I've heard and what I've seen. Sometimes you have to go because we have a logjam of talented players here. Sometimes the odd man out may have to go to a different yeah. community to get a shot. Captain of Cambridge, Nick Thomas, you know, uh, Rolando went to Cambridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had guys, uh, you, had, you had Dylan Martin and... Uh, Leighton on Ganawage, they went to Ontario final. So you definitely had some guys go off places and play big parts in those teams. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's it's it's a testament to the logjam of talent here. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to leave to go to a different community to get a, to get a crack at it. And those guys are going to these other teams and being the stars too, right? They're mm-hmm. not going there and just riding the pine. Mm-hmm. Who would you want to play with? Like, um, you know, just like individual players, like someone that you would be like, oh yeah, I want to like maybe not like, uh, you know, maybe be on the team they're on, but like just. I want to play with, uh, lacrosse with them at, at some point in life. Um, Cody Jamison, definitely somebody I would love to play with. Um, Austin Stotts, probably. Yeah, you know, kind of just like the big names. Have you gotten to play anywhere with your uncle Dehoga yet? I know it's probably tougher because he's is pro, so he's not playing those tournaments and stuff like that. But have you gotten to play with him, kind of in a little bit of a competitive setting? Uh, no, I actually haven't had the opportunity to play with him, but mm-hmm. I really would love to. Yeah, yeah. You say Vern, I guess they were similar age, right? They played together in some stuff, but yeah, like you said, next go around, or you have to hit him up. Yeah. Well, maybe there'll be a nations. Maybe are they ever going to bring the nations cup back? That'll be a fun thing to get in and. I don't know, last, last year was last, Onondaga. Last I, I heard, yeah, it was in Onondaga. I don't know who has the yeah, the like, power to like run said, that tournament anymore. That was always a good tournament, and, you know, pro guys would, no, would be a good opportunity. Dreamcatcher tournament in November. Mm-hmm. Um, here's, a, here's, here's something that is worst kept secret around. I have the actual Legends Cup trophy, so if any time that tournament wants to be brought back around, I'm in. Let's do it. Creators Cup podcast slash <laughs> yeah. Legends Cup. And <laughs> for, for everybody watching, don't be stealing my idea yeah. because uh, the, the trophy actually started with my family, so it's, yeah. it's kind of mine now. So, um, like you said, you got it. So I, I, I donated it to Senior, senior, yeah. senior C in 2019, and <laughs> Tomahawks actually won it and it just come back home to me. Yeah. So. And, uh, you know, whatever happened, happened there. And now this, the, the championship's named after the commissioner. Um, but I still have the actual Legends Cup. And that's definitely a thing. I can figure there's more tournaments popping up. Buffalo, there's last night in a few weeks. And Dreamcatcher's always been. Did you win it? You went, were on down below the two years ago when you guys won? Uh, no, I was playing for the Six Nation Sting. The Sting? That yeah. Nice, nice. So, was it just Vern on that team then? Or? Yeah. Okay. There's, um, like, I get emails all the time from... Uh, I can't remember the name exactly of the company. It, it's a company, and they put on these tournaments all over the place. Like they put them on. There's put them on in Vegas, Fort Wayne, Indiana. They put mm-hmm. one on, and the one's called the Midwest Challenge, or Midwest Cup, or yeah, something. Yeah, the Bear Paw guys. Yeah, the Bear Paw guys. I get those emails all the time. Um, and it's just a matter of getting the money to go to these things because 
nowadays when you put a team in, players expect their rooms to be covered. They expect their travel to be covered. And I'm like, well, okay. Some of these, some of these tournaments, there's like a one-day charity Masters tournament for an agri sports group coming up. That was like an $800 entry fee. And some of these contacts, like the Bear Paw stuff for Nashville stuff, you're looking at over 1000 bucks U.S. just to put the team Usually in. Usually 12, about twelve to 1500 yeah. bucks entry fee U.S.? Yeah. And then then you got to get there. Like there's there's a, a couple of different uh, companies, whatever, were having tournaments in Las Vegas. One had an adult tournament. One mm -hmm. had a kids box tournament. Mm -hmm. They're at Christmas time, and there's probably an extra ten, twelve thousand dollars just to go there for the weekend to take a team. Well, like you said Dreamcatcher. That's like one of the best tournaments around. Like that's like one of the I'd say that you guys had your Smith Lacrosse in a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. right? I, yeah. Josh Madero. So I, he I became a big fan of him watching him at your when he played with you guys in Dreamcatcher, yeah. just sitting around and then watching a little bit with Paris. And now he was on Panther City. Mm -hmm. That's became I was like, oh, this guy's yeah. pretty good. I and, had Josh. I had Drake Smith. Yeah. Um, and, We've played versus Dean in that tournament. That's just like a tough tournament to win. And usually out of 10 teams, eight or nine of them are local. I don't see guys come yeah. from further away, but not, you know, that's just like the testament of how many teams we got. Usually men's league, that's all it's five or six of them. And it's, like teams are in it's and, a fun tournament and it's affordable. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it goes you're, back to a good cause as well. Yeah. You're not paying 1500 us to go play in the dream catcher tournament. No. I mean, and if you guys are watching, don't jack the price up. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a cash prize at the end where some of these tournaments, like a last night, it's a great big tournament. They do 20 teams. It's expensive. And they just give you, like one guy's like, oh, do you get a trophy to drink out of? And I was like, I think they just give you a plaque. <laughs> was oh like, yeah. Like yeah. we went to tournaments before and even, even just asking around some of mm -hmm. these tournaments, you got to get there. Mm -hmm. And you got to pay for rooms and gas and food and entry fee, and you win a T-shirt. Like you said, maybe the Legends <laughs> Cup will come back. A lot of guys want more tournaments. Everybody after Dreamcatcher, everybody's like feeding for more tournaments, and there's not. So here's the we'll thing: have to figure something out. The Dreamcatcher tournament was started by my uh, aunt and uncle, mm -hmm. um, Isla and Boss Squire. Uh, my aunt Isla's passed on. She just passed um, this year. Mm -hmm. um, I did get permission from them to donate the trophy that's mm -hmm. came back. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really asked them about the tournament again because the, the whole reasoning behind the Legends Cup was to pay was to pay homage to our legends. Mm -hmm. Like each year was a different legend, different team. Like one year the program was like on the cover was like this 1967 Super Test Warriors. Another year it was like the 83 Schwiegen Warriors or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was a, the tournament was dedicated each year to a different legend or legendary team. Um, and then it, it got kind of big. That'd be cool to bring, like it sounds like a cool concept. It, to bring it, it was a great yeah. concept, yeah. but it started getting a lot bigger. So then there was a tournament committee. Mm -hmm. um, there was trophies donated not just the championship trophy, but there was trophies donated for like best goalie, mm -hmm. high score, the tournament, stuff like that. I, I I did come across a couple of those tournaments. The best goaltender store uh, uh, trophy, I did give back to the family that donated it. Um, I still have, and it's funny because I'm working with the Rivermen now, working with, you know, Cap and mm -hmm. Cheryl and Corey and Cam Bunbury, Wayne Hill, the, working with the Bunbury family. Mm -hmm. The trophy that I have that I found... Um, is the Oliver Cap MVP trophy. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about it. Do you want it back? And he was like, they're like the committee. That was given to the committee. So the Legends Cup used to have a committee. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a lot of work. So if, if we want to make this Legends Cup tournament happen, it's going to take more than just me. Yeah. yeah so cool. a committee will need to be formed. And I want to open it up because, again, like you said, we've got mm -hmm. so many teams down here, mm -hmm. Dreamcatcher tournaments full of – out of 10 teams, it's full of eight from six nations. Yeah. So like, I want to make it a little bigger. Like there, I get big, thanks to social media. Um, I get, and, and, and this podcast, of course, I get a lot of people reaching out to me from all over the place. There's a team in Chicago that we've, we're kind of bantering back and forth. They want to play the Rivermen. And like, are you sure you want to do that? Be just because you're ripping it up in Chicago. <laughs> but I mean, if you're watching, Come to the come to the Legends Cup tournament if and when we host it. Yeah, like I said, there's Rochester Bats. There's like a bunch of teams too, and Utica Yeti. Yeah, so I'm sure some of those teams would like to come this way and test their skills. I'm still waiting for uh, the OLG to come out and try to uh, get into lacrosse. Yeah. Get them to sponsor a tournament and be like, "Hey, who, let's put let's put wagers on who's going to be the highest scorer, <laughs> who's going to get the most goals against, different things like that. Let's spice it up, OLG. Make it spicy. Yeah, but uh, that's a. Uh, I didn't know that uh, your family was like with the Legends Cup and all that. They started it. Yeah, 
fucking legend over here. Fucking legendary. Learning every week. Okay, any last minute things before you uh, get out of here? Any shout outs? Any uh, teammates you want to say, hey, see you next year? Different things like that. Or maybe not see you next year. Don't know what team you're going to be on. Different things. Mm, just want to say thank you to like all the people that helped me get where I am. And thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, and uh, this is the Creators Game Podcast.